What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And in this video, we are doing part three in our series on learning how to make a weapon skin from start to finish for CS2. Now, inside of this video, we're going to talk about a lot of different things. First and foremost, we're going to talk about stencils, how to create them, and then how to add them inside of your project, especially if you have a graphic that you want to go all the way up and over the top part of your weapon. Uh, also, we're going to talk about the paintbrush tool because that can be extremely important. And then finally, we're going to talk about projecting things all the way through the weapon and the different ways that you can go back and fix all of the little errors. So so that's what this video is going to be about. So anyways, let's go. So the first thing we're going to talk about inside of this video is creating a stencil for our project. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to be using Photoshop. However, feel free to use whatever program you are most comfortable with as long as you stick to two key principles. First and foremost, whenever you are creating a stencil, you always want it to be on a square background. As you can see here, I have created one that is 4096 by 4096. And then the other key principle is that you want to make sure that your stencil has a transparent background to it. Uh, so as long as you stick to those two key principles, you can really use any program you want to create your stencils. So real quickly, I'm just going to bring my image in here. I'm going to drop it on top of my project and then click off of it. Then once my image is inside of my project, I'm just going to go down here and delete this background so that my background is completely transparent. Then the final thing we're going to do, we're going to go right up here to File, Export, and Quick Export as PNG, and then we're just going to give this a name. Let's just call this Stencil and hit Enter. So that's pretty much it. Those are the basic steps that you're going to go through in order to create a stencil for your project. You always want to make sure that it is on a square background and that that background is transparent. Now, usually whenever I do stencils, I always like to create a new brush for them. Uh, this is so I don't have to constantly keep going back and resetting my brush each and every time I want to add something. Uh, let's say, for example, you're working on bump maps. You may want to create both a black and a white brush so that you have one for parts that go inward and then one for parts that go outward as well. And you don't have to keep going back and resetting up your brush each and every time. Now, if we click on this box right here, you will see that we currently only have one paintbrush. However, as you add new ones, this is actually where you will go to find them. If you want to duplicate a brush, all you have to do is click on this number two right here. And then if you want to create a new brush, all you have to do is click on this X and then click new. Now, if we go back, you'll notice that I now have two different brushes here. So for this brush, we're going to be setting it up for our stencil. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a name. Let's just call it stencil so we know which one it is. Then once we have this set up, I'm just going to scroll down. I'm going to find this texture drop down. I'm going to open it up. We are going to click on new. And then right here where it says mapping, we just want to set this to stencil. Then once we have all of this set up, we're going to go to our texture properties tab. We're going to click on open and then we're going to go find our stencil image. So let's just double click on it. Now, as you can see, I have my stencil that has been added to my project. Now, whenever you are working with stencils inside of Blender, there are a few keyboard shortcuts that you're going to want to familiarize yourself with. First and foremost, if you need to move this around inside of your project, you can do so by simply clicking in your right trigger button and then just moving it around on your screen. Uh, next, if you want to scale this either up or down, you could do so by holding in shift, clicking your right trigger button, and then just moving your mouse up or down. And then finally, if you want to free rotate this, you can just hold in your control key, click in your right trigger button, and then move your mouse around in circles. Now, a couple of other ones that I want to make you guys aware of, if you want a more accurate way of rotating this, you can do so by hitting Control-F on your keyboard. This will give you a dial right here. 
Uh, you can see that this is moving very quickly. However, if I hold in my shift key, it'll move a lot slower. So this will help you to get a little bit more accurate with it. Also, if you hold down your control key, it will do it in increments of 10. Now, the other way that you can rotate this is just to simply go right here under texture. You will see this angle right here. We can just go in and type in our angle. So let's just type in 270. And now, as you can see, I have this set to a perfect 270 degrees inside of my project. Uh, so those are just a few things that I wanted to make you familiar with whenever it comes to working with stencils inside a blender. So now that we have our brush and our stencil set up, the next thing I want to do is I want to add it to my project. Now, one thing you will notice if I go back and forth between my UV and my normal view, you'll see that we can actually add this stencil in two different places. If all I wanted to do was just paint this on the side of my weapon, I would probably just do it here. However, the idea I had was for this to actually wrap all the way up over the top of my object and come down on the other side. So if that is the case inside of your project, you're going to want to paint this on your UV rather than this view right here. Now, one problem you may notice is that I can't actually see the outline of this object. So in order to fix that, we're first going to go over to UV editing. We're going to click on UV and go down to show hide faces. And then we just want to select reveal hidden. Then if we go back over to texture paint, you'll now notice that we can see the full outline of our UV. We can now scroll in here real close. We can bring this on top of our project. Uh, let's just sort of scale this and get it exactly where we want it. Then once we have this set inside of our project exactly where we want, the last thing you want to do before you start painting is to make sure that you have a white setup on your paintbrush. Uh, you don't really want to use any color at all. You really want the colors to come from your stencil right here. And then once all of this is done, all we simply have to do is click in our left trigger button and start painting our graphic on. So let's just go ahead and paint this on real quick. Now, when I let off my left trigger button, you'll notice that our graphic has been added to the weapon and it perfectly wraps all the way up and over the top of it. Now, one last thing I want to show you guys real quick, whenever you are ready to turn this back off, you can simply go back over to UV editing, click on UV, go down to show hide faces and just select hide selected. And now we're back where we were when we first started. Now, let's say as part of your design, you actually want to add some roughness behind your stencil. Obviously, if you are going inside a blender and you are creating two different paintbrushes and trying to line this up, it's going to be very difficult to do. So real quickly, I wanted to show you guys a method where you could add the roughness behind your stencils and get them to match up perfectly inside of your project. So just as we did with our previous stencil, I'm first going to bring my graphic inside of Photoshop. I'm going to put this on a square background. And of course, I'm going to delete the background out and export this as a PNG. Now I'm ready to start adding my roughness. Uh, now there are two different ways that you could do this. You could draw your roughness out in another program and then bring it over inside of Photoshop and line it up and then export it or you can use the tricks that I talked about at the end of video number two, which was just going in and adding a color overlay over it. And that's actually the method that I'm going to use for this example. So now that we have this set up, the first thing I'm going to do is right click right here on my layer and go to blending options. I'm going to turn on my color overlay and click on this box right here. And then I'm just going to set the color of my roughness. Let's make it something like that. We're going to click OK and then OK again. Now I'm just simply going to export this as a PNG file. And I know that both this roughness right here and my color stencil are going to match up perfectly. So now that I am back inside of my project, the first thing I'm going to do is just fill in my color stencil like so. Then once I have this stencil added, the next thing I want to do is add my roughness. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that while you are doing this process, you do not want to move anything inside of this screen or else it will not align properly. I'm going to go right over here to my texture properties and I just want to delete my original stencil by clicking on this X. 
I'm going to go right down here to open and then we just want to go and find our stencil rough and just double click on it. Finally, I'm going to go right up here to my tools. We want to make sure that we are on our roughness texture. And then I'm just going to go over here and just paint this on top of my object. And as you can see, I was able to get my roughness to perfectly align with the color stencil that we added earlier. Uh, so this is just something I wanted to make you guys aware of. There may be times inside of your project where you are wanting to add a stencil, also a roughness behind it, and you want to make sure that both of these line up correctly. And that is a method that you can use in order to achieve this. The last key point I'll make when it comes to stencils is that you can use these for bump maps as well. Uh, you would just want to create your design in either a black or a white, depending on whether or not you wanted it to be inset or stick outward. Then you would bring it over as a template inside a blender, use a white brush, and then just simply paint it into your design. Uh, so that's just sort of a final point I wanted to make about stencils. So the next thing we're going to talk about inside of this video is the paintbrush tool. Now, as far back as I can remember, I don't remember ever having a project where at some point or another, I did not use a paintbrush, whether it was to fix pixel errors or projection errors, or even to paint something on my weapon. I end up using the paint tool in almost every single project I do. So obviously it's extremely important. Now, I do realize that some of you guys may already be familiar with these tools. If you are, please feel free to use the chapters down below to skip ahead. However, for anyone who is new to Blender or just creating skins in general, I did think that this was extremely important information to add to this video. So the first thing I wanted to mention was changing the size of your brush. Now you will notice this radius right here inside of this right hand menu. We can actually go over here and change the size of our brush right here. We can also change the size of it at the top of the screen, or we can just simply right click on our mouse. And we also have the option available to us right here. You'll also notice that you have the ability to change the strength of your brush in all three of those locations. That can be extremely important. Uh, just as with the radius, there are also three locations where you can change your color. You can do it either right here inside of this menu. You can do it at the top of the screen. Or when you right click, you can just select this box right here. And then you will get all of the options to change your colors. The next thing I wanted to talk about inside of this video are different stroke methods that you may want to use inside of your project. Now there are actually several of these. I'm not going to have time to go over all of them inside of this video, but I did want to point out the three that I use the most inside of my own projects. First and foremost, by default, you will notice that this stroke method is set to space. This will actually allow you to come in and just freely paint over the top of your project. So that one you're going to use a lot. The second one that I use a lot is, of course, the align stroke. If we come down here inside of our project and click anywhere and hold and drag this line out, then we let off of our left trigger button. You will see that it will draw a perfectly straight line for us. Uh, another thing to know about the align stroke is that if you hold down your alt key and then you draw out your line, it will snap in perfect 45 degree angles. This can be extremely useful, especially if you need a perfectly horizontal or vertical line inside of your project. The third stroke method that I find that I use quite often is, of course, the curve. Now, if we drop this down to curve, you will see all of these different options here. Uh, the first thing you want to do to create your curve is just to click on new. You can give your curve a name. Then once you are inside of your project, the next thing you will want to do is add nodes. So in order to do that, you're going to hold down the control key, click in your right mouse button. And as you can see, we can go inside of our project and add all of these different nodes. Now, if you need to move a node around, you can just right click on top of it and then move your mouse around. If you want to create a curve inside of this line, we can hold down control, click in our right mouse button. And as you can see, we now get these handles to be able to control the curve of this line. If you need to delete a node, you just need to select it and hit the X button. And then finally, whenever you get ready to draw out your curve, you just want to hold down the control button and click in your left mouse button. 
Uh, so those are the three basic stroke methods that I personally use inside of a lot of my projects. However, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, there are a lot of different stroke methods. You can sort of get in there and play around with them and figure out what each one of them do. The next big thing that I wanted to talk about when it comes to the paintbrush is of course this fall off right here. Now this can be extremely important depending on what it is you are doing inside of your design. Uh, so you'll definitely want to get familiar with this. Now if I go inside of my project right here and just draw a line out, let's just draw a straight line all the way down, you will notice how the color is solid right here in the middle and then as it goes out to the outside edges, it sort of fades out. That's based on this curve right here, which is going to be this default brush. Now there may be times inside of your project where you need a line where these edges are very sharp. If we want to do that, we can click on this button right here and we can use this curve in order to control that. If I take this node and bump it all the way up and then I go in here and draw my line, you'll now notice that the edges of my line are very sharp and prominent. Uh, likewise, if we turn both of these down, let's go ahead and pull this one down and pull this one down as well. And we paint on top of our project. Now you'll notice that it is more of a light shadow. Uh, so this is just something you have to kind of get in there and play around with. You are going to find certain times inside of your design where maybe you need a very straight and sharp edge like this. You'll also find times where you might need a little bit of fall off or maybe you need something that is more of a shadow. Uh, and the way that you would do that is by coming down here and playing with the fall off on your paintbrush. So the last two key points I wanted to make when it comes to the paintbrush is deleting things out of your project and also using these two colors right here. Uh, first and foremost, you will notice that I have this pink color set up as my primary. If I go in here and use my left trigger button, you can see that I am just drawing this color on top of my object. However, there are going to be times inside of your project where you need to delete things out. And the way that you do this is by matching the base color of your image texture and then adding it to one of these two squares and then just simply painting over the top of your design. Now, because we have both of these set up, if I want to use this secondary color right here, the way that you would do that is by holding down your X key. If I hold down the X key and draw this line out, you'll notice that it now uses that secondary color and now that secondary color has become my primary. I can actually come in here and finish covering this object up. Then whenever I want to go back, I can just hold down X again and as you can see, the pink pops up as my primary. Uh, so that's just something I wanted to show you guys. There are going to be times inside of your project where you need to delete things out. Also, by having these two different colors set up, sometimes you're going to find it very useful to be able to have two different colors that you can go back and forth between whenever you are painting inside of your project. So for the next part of this video, we're actually going to be adding our graphic to the grip of the weapon. And in order to do this, I'm actually going to project it all the way through so that it shows up on both the left and the right hand side. However, when you are projecting things all the way through your weapon, you are going to run into some projection errors. So we're going to talk about the different ways that you can fix this both inside of your project and inside of your UV as well. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add our graphic. So first things first, I'm going to go up here and make sure I'm on the proper texture. And then I'm going to go down here under options and just turn occlude and backface culling off. Next, I'm going to hit quick edit. Once this opens up inside of Photoshop, we can bring our graphic in and drop it inside of our project. Once this finishes loading, we can then resize this and get it exactly where we want it inside of our project. We are going to delete layer one. We are going to file save. We're going to go back over to Blender and we're going to click apply. Now, if we rotate this around, you will see that this graphic is now on both the left and the right hand side. However, you will also notice that there are a lot of projection errors. There are areas where this paint did not fully project onto it. Uh, so the next thing we're going to have to do is go in with a paintbrush and we're going to have to fix all of these errors inside of our project. 
So the first thing I'm going to do at this point is to set up my paintbrush. Uh, just as in the previous instructions, we're gonna go ahead and select a radius for our brush. We're also going to select our color. I want to make sure that my color matches the color of my graphic right here. So I'm gonna go and add that hex code, which is B4E800 and click enter. Uh, the next thing I want to do is set my stroke type. For now, I'm just going to use the stroke method of space and freehand this. Uh, since this isn't being submitted to the workshop, it does not have to be perfect. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and set up my fall off. As you can tell, this line looks pretty solid around the edge with maybe just a slight little bit of fall off on it. So I'm just going to use this curve for now. Uh, and then finally, we're going to go down here and we're going to turn on occlude and back face culling. That way, whenever we start painting, we aren't accidentally painting all the way through this object. So now that I have my paintbrush set up, I'm just going to go in here and start freehanding this out. Let's just go ahead and paint across like this. Uh, now, one thing you may notice is that the edge of this line is very pixelated. I do want to show you guys a way that you can fix this. Uh, if you look right up here inside of your tools, you'll notice this smear tool. If we just select it and kind of go over this edge a little bit, you'll notice that it softens that edge up and it gets rid of all of those little pixels along the edge. Uh, so that's another very useful tool that you can use inside of texture paint. So next, I'm going to go back to my paintbrush. I just want to give myself a little bit of room here. One thing you will notice is that when you scroll in and you scroll out, the size of your paintbrush actually does not change. However, when you scroll out, it is going to be a lot bigger. So just sort of keep that in mind. We're going to go down through here and just paint over all of this area. Now, one thing to keep in mind whenever you are painting, be aware of whatever is in the background. If I flip this over and I was to paint on this edge right here, you'll notice that that paint has also gotten on this part as well. So if you did not want that, you may have to tilt this up like so where there's nothing in the background to paint along this edge. So that's just something that you always want to keep in mind whenever you are painting. Uh, next, let's go right here to the front and fill all of this in. And now, as you can see, I was able to go in and fix a lot of those projection errors on top of my weapon. Uh, so that's basically it. If you are projecting all the way through and you do notice some projection errors, the texture paint tools are going to be extremely helpful in being able to go back and finish these parts of your weapon off. The last key point that I wanted to make when it comes to projecting is that bear in mind that if there are any pieces inside of this object right here, whenever you project all the way through, those parts are also going to get paint on them. If we rotate this over, you will see this piece right here. You will notice that we have a little bit of green up inside of this part on both sides, also along this edge right here. So if that wasn't what you were trying to do inside of your project, you're more than likely going to have to go back and fix these parts. Now, there are two different methods for doing this. Uh, in both of the methods, you are going to want to start off by selecting the base color of this object. And then the first method would be to go right here on this object and just sort of paint over these parts of your weapon. However, the one thing that you are going to have to worry about is overpaint. You know, you're going to have to constantly be worried about whether or not you are painting onto this outside edge as well as this inside edge. The other method for doing this would be to open up your UV sheet. As you can see, these are the pieces that are on the inside that I do not want. If I wanted to fix these, then I would, of course, pick this base color that is in the background, and I would just go in and paint over the top of it right here on my UV. So for this last demonstration, I'm actually going to be doing two different things. I want to first add a couple of hand-drawn bump maps to my design, and then I also want to go in and clean them up inside of my UVs. Now, I'm not going to go very far into depth on hand-drawn bump maps. I do have a video on this if you do want to go back and watch that. However, as a reference, just know that anything that is black is going to be inset, while anything that is white is going to stick outward. 
So first and foremost, I just want to go up here and make sure that my bump is selected and my textures. I'm going to set up a black color on my brush. I'm also going to use this default brush curve right here for my bumps. And then finally, I'm going to turn occlude and backface culling off, and then I'm going to get a perfect left hand view. That way I know that this is going to project all the way through and be on both sides of the weapon. Then once all of that is set up, I'm just going to go in here and draw my lines. Let's just go ahead and use the alt key to make sure that these are perfectly horizontal. Uh, I also want to add a 45 degree one here. So let's just go ahead and add that one as well. And as you can see, I now have these bump maps and they've been projected all the way through and are on both sides of the weapon. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is I just want to go in and add some color to the inside of this. So real quickly, I'm going to just use the circle right here. I'm going to use the radius of it to make sure that it fits perfectly with both this line and this line as well. Uh, that actually looks pretty good. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change my fall off because I want this line to have very sharp edges on it. I'm going to select my color. Let's just go ahead and add our green color, which is B4E 800 and click enter. And then finally, I just want to make sure that I am on my color texture. Then once I have all of this set up, I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to use my alt key again to make sure that this stays perfectly horizontal. I'm just going to fill that in. I'm also going to fill this one in at the exact same time. Uh, and now, as you can see, I was able to go in and add some hand-drawn bump maps to my design and some color, and I was also able to project it all the way through so that it is perfect on both sides of my weapon. The last thing that I want to do is just clean up some of this projection stuff that happened here on the inside of my weapon. Obviously, I have them up here as well, but I'm just going to clean this up right here on the inside just as a quick example. So if I open up my UV, you will notice these two lines right here. These are actually the ones that sit on the inside of that object. The first thing I want to do is I want to match my base color right here. So I'm going to click on this color box. I'm going to use this dropper tool and I'm just going to select that background. I'm also going to make my paintbrush just a little bit bigger. And then I'm just going to paint over these two green lines right here. And as you can see, if we go back to our project, you'll notice that the paint is now gone from the inside of this weapon. Uh, I also want to do the same thing for my bump map. So I'm going to go down here to my bump. I want to make sure that my background color is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and change all of these to be 0.5. Sometimes with the bump maps, if you try to use the dropper tool, it won't work properly. You will have to go in and add those numbers yourself. Then we're just going to paint over these two black lines right here. So now, as you can see, if we go back to our project, you'll notice that we have our really nice hand painted bump maps. However, they are only on the outside of the weapon. We were able to take them out of the inside and just make this look a little bit cleaner. Uh, so those are just a couple of things I wanted to demonstrate for you guys real quick. I wanted to show you guys how you can do some hand-drawn bump maps inside of your design and also how you can go back and clean them up very quickly inside of your UVs. So this concludes video number three in our video series on learning how to make a full weapon skin. And hopefully you guys are enjoying this information. Now in video number four, we're going to start talking about the different map types. I'm going to show you guys how you can create those. We're also going to talk about how you combine those together inside of another program such as GIMP. So that's what the next video is going to be on. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. If you would, please leave likes or comments down below and make sure and hit that subscribe button because it really helps this channel out a lot. Anyways, thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video.